Nightfall is the poster child for Armored Core 6, being prominently featured in the trailers and even having a collectible figure shipping with the collector's edition of the game. Nightfall sold Armored Core 6, but only shows up during two relatively unimportant missions in the entire game. This leaves a lot of us curious and wanting more, but Nightfall isn't the only culprit here. The story trailer involved a long battle sequence full of characters that are at best only mentioned in the game. 617, 619, and 620. 617 reigned as the meme king for weeks on the Armored Core subreddit, but failed to appear in the game. Or did they? What's up gamers, it's Absurd here, and before we get rolling, I want to thank my newest patron, Sierra Tsukihiro. Check the links in the description if you'd like to support this content financially as well, or get more involved with the community on our Discord. One of the strangest things about Armored Core 6 is how it chooses to deliver on many of the promises in the pre-release content, namely when it comes to Nightfall. We shouldn't be too surprised by this, since the purpose of trailers is to sell the consumer on the game without spoiling the game for them. Studios have a habit of outsourcing trailers to other studios more specialized for that kind of work. For example, From Software hired Digic Pictures to do trailers for Sekiro, Elden Ring, and Armored Core 6. These trailers exist as a second-hand narrative crafted by an unreliable narrator to hook an audience, but not to be accurate. We see this in the Armored Core 6 trailers, with much of their emphasis being placed on characters and events that are unimportant to the big picture of the game specifically Walter's Hound 617 and the mysterious AC Nightfall. In this video, I'm going to dive into these characters and see if they might actually play a bigger role in the game than it appears at first glance. We are introduced to 617 and the others in a cutscene conversation between Walter and Carla after the mission Investigate Bouse Arsenal No. 2. Walter says his hounds did their job in getting them established on Rubicon, referring to the events in the story trailer. In that trailer, we saw a squad of Walter's hounds outfitted much like 621, assaulting a PCA position, evidenced by the presence of the PCA cannon and a cataphract weapon, both of which are seen in the game. The PCA, or Planetary Closure Administration, is a safeguard against extrastellar coral interests. Walter's interest in coral depends on the success of his hounds in this skirmish against the PCA. The battle goes ill for the hounds, with only 617's resolve being enough to finish the fight single-handedly despite being severely damaged. 617's computer states signal lost rather than vital signs lost, as it had with 619 earlier in the trailer, suggesting that unlike 619, 617 may have miraculously survived the combat, even having lost their left arm and head parts. If we look at the reveal trailer, we see a clip of a scavenger AC with the same frame as 617, salvaging a left arm part from the wreckage. Note how we never see its head part. The rest of the trailer focuses on PCA weapons, such as the attack helicopters and the cataphract, and features one AC prominently, Nightfall, who shares the same frame as 617 and the scavenger AC, with the exception of a different head part. This evidence combined with these two images, one being Nightfall and the other being 617, make me confident that the two ACs represent the same character. But this raises more questions than it answers. Nightfall's head part, Shade Eye, is built by RAD, like all the other parts. But RAD is run by Carla. Remember, Carla asked Walter what happened to 617 and the others. So either she really didn't know, 
and somehow 617 acquired this custom RAD part without her knowing. Or she did know, and was keeping it a secret from Walter. I think she knew. Walter and Carla are both members of a secret organization known as Overseer. Overseer's goal is well defined by their emblem, which reads, Intervene, Prevent, Observe, in English, and Presta cautela quam medela, a Latin phrase which means caution is better than cure. This is their approach to coral and preventing uncontrolled disaster. Prior to the fires of Ibis, the Rubicon Research Institute experimented with coral, leading to the development of sea weapons, Ibis model ACs, and coral augmentation of humans. Both Carla and Walter had close ties to the Institute before the fires, being depicted in this sketch from a data log and mentioned in the logs of Professor Nagai. Both are well-aged during the events of the game, 50 years after the fires of Ibis. Carla, being one of the Institute's research assistants, is older and likely more aware of the events surrounding the fires and the formation of Overseer than Walter is due to his young age as a child at the time. She is also more firmly established and successful on Rubicon, heading a whole faction, R.A.D. Carla also demonstrates a willingness to work behind Walter's back, offering 621 multiple missions without Walter's involvement. All these things considered, it is safe to assume Carla is quite capable of operating for Overseer above and beyond Walter's knowledge or ability, including supporting 617 and going rogue from Walter after the events of the story trailer to become Nightfall Raven a member of Branch. Branch is described in the game as a hacktivist group made up of four rotating mercenary members. Nightfall operates under the callsign Raven, but Raven is a title passed down through generations of mercenaries, meaning that 617 could be Nightfall Raven, even if someone else under that callsign had been operating on Rubicon before 617's defection from Walter. Branch has rotating members with a legacy call sign, after all. Carla might support 617 in becoming Nightfall Raven because Branch may have secret ties to Overseer. Overseer's emblem is a tree, and Branch may be an offshoot of that tree. Let's explore that possibility going forward with this story. In the first mission, we are tasked with recovering a valid Merc license from AC Rex. The first usable license we find belongs to Raven. Inspecting this wreck, we can see it is outfitted like the Nightfall build with a familiar frame, headpiece, pile bunker, and rifle. Note how the color scheme here looks more like the Nightfall from the trailer than the Nightfall we see in the game. This suggests that the events of Nightfall fighting the PCA in the trailer happened before the game and this wreck may be the consequence of those events. Unsurprisingly, after recovering the license, we are attacked by a PCA chopper which may have been searching for Raven as well, considering their history. We defeat the chopper and claim the callsign Raven to operate under Walter for quite some time before this particular plot develops again. During the mission Attack the Watchpoint, we fight Sula, who asks Walter about 617 and the others, like Carla had, and admits to killing 618, who was not present in the story trailer mission. But we don't get much more out of him. Much later in Chapter 3, we learn more during the mission Attack the Refueling Base. We are intercepted by PCA elite forces. Sign Raven. Priority subject for termination. High on the list. The PCA troops speak as if they fought us before, saying how they won't fail again. But we know they are speaking of the previous Raven whose call sign we are using. 
We soon get more details on these previous interactions between Raven and the PCA during a mission in which we fight the cataphract weapon seen in the story trailer. The PCA pilots again mention us as a priority target for termination and go into why, citing how Raven leaked information that started this whole mess and turned Rubicon into a playground for the corporation meaning the previous Raven leaked information about the presence of Coral that drew all the corporations into a race to obtain it. That sounds to me like a very overseer thing to do. Observe Rubicon for the presence of Coral. Intervene by leaking its presence to the corporations who have more assets for locating it and prevent a future disaster by swooping in at the last moment to deal with the coral themselves. I've thought long and hard about what branch stands to gain by leaking this info on their own other than gaining money or job security. And maybe it really is as simple as that. But what's harder to rationalize is why branch would even be active on Rubicon to find the coral information in the first place. If they really are mercenaries for hire, wouldn't they be off-world where the work is with the corporations? It doesn't add up unless Branch is involved with Overseer in some way, even if they were just hired to do a job. We know from the arena bios of Branch members Chartreuse and King that they were involved in the attack on the PCA closure system at Station 31 an attack meant to open the planet up for the corporations. This enabled Overseer to operate in the shadows beneath the corporations to achieve its goal of getting to the coral. In New Game Plus Plus, there is another mission in which we fight the cataphract that reveals some additional dialogue. The PCA pilots are surprised by our ID coming back as Raven, who is believed by them to be dead likely due to the situation that allowed us to recover our license in the first place. In both missions, I did the cannon thing and stuffed my Gatling gun down the cataphract's throat until it died. Later, on the mission Defend the Spaceport, we finally meet the namesake of our identity. Do you read me, Raven? I've identified the target. That's the mercenary who took your name. See how far they can fly. On borrowed wings. Standing atop a defeated PCA warship in a graveyard over other PCA weapons stands Nightfall, the legendary AC. It's an apt description. Raven is legendary because they aren't just a single pilot. Ravens never die because the title lives on. And Raven essentially started the war on Rubicon for the Coral with their leak. Even Walter is amazed by what Nightfall is capable of, which would be no surprise if he knew this was 617. We do our part in adding to the Raven legend by taking Nightfall out and starting a new chapter in the Raven legacy. But there is an alternate mission in which we confront Nightfall Raven as well. Hired by the RLF to defend the Gallia Dam, Air sends us to face branch members King and Chartreuse. It's important to note who is sending us on the mission and why due to the previous connections between Overseer and Branch. During the fight, King mocks our use of the name Raven and expects us to be an easy kill. But he is quickly impressed by our skill and with his last words calls us worthy of our name. Chartreuse is soon to follow and then it's down to Raven vs Raven. But there can only be one and today it's us, 621 Raven. Sadly, we never hear of Nightfall or Branch again after this. Some of the final missions take place on Station 31 of Branch fame, but that's it. 
FromSoft marketed this game on the back of 617 Nightfall and constructed this elaborate hidden plot, but in its delivery, it's just a tiny subplot that concludes during chapter 3 of the game. It feels bad. You play the game, Nightfall shows up for 5 minutes, dies, and is never mentioned again. Uncovering the whole story, as we have here, makes me wonder about this choice. So much care was put into crafting this character and narrative that it's difficult to wrap my head around the apparent lack of care put into how it ends.